Good morning. How are we all this morning? All right, let's, sorry guys, I just wanna straighten up my camera. That'll do. Wow, a few of you dropping in this morning. Is everybody still laying in bed watching <laughs> watching um, a bit of Facebook, flicking through? So happy, happy Sunday. I hope you are all doing well this morning and fit and healthy and have woken up feeling like you're going to take on the day. If you did, can you do it for me as well? Because I certainly didn't. Feeling a little, uh, little tired this morning. Maybe it's the, you know, three days of talking to myself. <laughs> I know you're all out there and, you know, I know that that's not a drama. But, um, you know, just that whole chatting to yourself and whatnot. But um, anyway, to this morning I am going to be creating a mixed media door. So... Uh, today is scrap effects day and chipboard day and that is 15% off of scrap effects products online and also chipboard as well all right so jump on to nataliemay.com.au and you will find these things on special they will automatically be um, discounted at your at, on the checkout so all right I'm gonna work today with one of the AB Studios um, chipboard doors these are awesome this here is one I prepared earlier this is the front cover of my art journal my junk journal and um, I'm gonna show you how to put together one of these doors and I haven't done this particular design before so I've got no idea how badly this will go or how wonderfully this will go but you know what I'm like guys full transparency I would rather wing it and show you how easy or how hard it is and then um yeah go from there so this project this morning will have a bit of a uh may take a little time but I figure you know what I've got nothing else to do this morning so I may as well commit to it so this is the one that I have made before. So um, this would make a fantastic cover for a mini album or something like that. So, all right, so I've taken it out of the packet and I get two plain boards here and this little jigsaw piece board. So before I start, I'm going to grab my craft knife and cut out some of these pieces and separate them from the board simply because I don't want I don't want to paint them while they are in the board I want to make sure that they are all separate and I want to layer them all out to make sure that everything is you know I want to see how it looks before I I do it so all I'm doing is just running my knife down the edges just to push them out, separate them a bit, and go from there. Now, something that I did with this particular image, um, because I didn't know exactly what it looked like, I jumped online and did a search for the AB Studios doors. And I found this picture here. So I found two actually, I found this yellow one and I found this one. So I have printed them out and that's going to be my little roadmap for creating this door. Whoops. So I know how everything lays out. So would certainly help for you to do exactly the same thing. So I've just got that sitting off to the side just to make sure that everything, uh, that I know exactly what is going to go where uh, and I can mix it up and go from there. Uh, I'm going to push out these little bits here. And I'm going to glue them all down in a moment. And lay them all up onto the board. So 
So this is just going to give me a, a bit of a map, so just so I can see what I've got. So the really good thing is, see how easy they all put, push out? So they're not exactly chipboard, they're like a white um, veneer card. Awesome. All right, so now I'm gonna start laying them out. So with the two pieces that I got, this is gonna be, I'm gonna turn this into a mini album, which I'm not going to do today. So this will be the back, this will be the front. So I'm gonna pop one of those aside and I'm just gonna lay out my, my book as to how, well, how my, sorry, my door, how I want it to go. So I think I might do it like that. Layer that one up into there. Layer that one into there. Um, do I want to have those at the top like that? I don't mind having this sort of layered window going on, but I might just stick one to three so I'm getting myself a bit of design going before I start just so that I know what I'm doing and I'm going to put these bits back in here but I'm going to lift them up a little bit higher with some either foam tape or cardboard and I might do the same thing with this but I'm going to punch out these bits Get it on there, get out, get out, get out. And like I said, I have made the other door before, but I've never made this one, so I'm totally winging it. And there's, like I said, there's lots of different configurations. I'm just going with what is easy and grabbing a an image that I found on the interwebs and uh, printed it out and referring to that. I'm gonna go with that one there. Punch that one out. Yes, I could have done this off camera and saved you guys the time and effort to watch me fumble around here, but you know what? <laughs> nah. Cool, all right, so that is what I'm going to do. Am I gonna use this piece? No, I don't think so. Am I gonna use this side frame? Maybe, maybe. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start gluing all of these elements down. Uh, I'm going to use just my normal puzzle glue for this purpose because uh, it's got this lovely fine tip on it and it's going to enable me to, I think I do want that cover on there, but I'll put it on last. I'll put it into position and glue it on later. Um, okay. So I am gonna do this. So before I do it, I'm gonna put all of these elements off to the side now that I've laid it out. And go from there. So I'm just gonna pop that into place with a couple of clips because I don't want to glue it down yet. Because if I turn it into a mini book, I want to be able to slide a little bit of paper in here and something to help bind my book together, all right? So that's the thinking there, but I wanna stick this down. Um, I could paint all of these elements first and then put them together, but I think today, for today's purposes, this is going to be nice and easy. Um, so the glue that I'm using is the puzzle glue, magic glue that I bring in from Poland and You've all seen me use this glue a million and one times. Dot that into place. Then I'm gonna take that out after. But oh no, here we go. Let's glue this one down. Let's just commit to it. Let's, oh, hello. So you could use gel medium, you could use any sort of adhesive. I clearly am having some massive Sunday issues here because the coordination is out the door. And then what I'm thinking, I had a bit of a 
had a bit of a think this morning. What am I going to do? How am I going to color my door? What's my medium? I've decided today to go with a combination of acrylic paint and I've got a little bit of Lindy's, um, what are they, moon shadow sprays here. I've got a, a blue to use because uh, I hummed and hard about what color I was going to do my door in. Um, but I thought oh, I'll go, I'll do something a little bit different. The last one I did in navy blues. This one I thought I might do in lighter blues. I could have done a brown door, but ugh, can't be bothered. Can't be bothered. All right, I don't need that. I don't need that. I am going to pop this one down flat because I want that to be inset, set into it a little bit. And I do love that these have got some gorgeous detail. And because these are porous, because it is like a veneer chipboard sort of product material, and they are porous, it also means that if I was to add a, oh, I know what I didn't do. Um, yeah, if I was to add a, Oh, what do I want to call something like wet to it, like a, a watercolour or a um, a like the magicals in a spray. They're probably going to soak right in. So I'm just cutting off this little frame here because I want to stick it into the middle here to build up this section. So I'm going to lift it up in height. so that I can stick those panels on. Instead of using foam tape. But I do love that you've got the ability with this to create any sort of design. Um, oh, bugger. just using something small. Good morning to those of you just tuning in. I'm having a bit of a play this morning with the um, AB Studios door, chipboard door and or veneer door and I'm going to, there we go, so that sits up that little bit higher, okay. That one there could also sit up higher. Let's do that. And I'll do exactly the same thing with, use my offcuts, one, two, three, four, one, two. So yes, I have to apologize. It is a little bit fiddly watching me flounder through doing this this morning, but I promise you that um, I'll get to the good stuff in a minute. Where are my tweezers? Here we go. Yep, perfect. And that, I can just dot that in there. Uh, 
Um, if I get, the question has just been asked if, if I get extra glue on the chipboard, will it um, absorb into the paint? No, it'll, because it'll go straight, acrylic paint will go straight over the top of glue because acrylic plate paint's really quite versatile. But if I am going to be using like water or something, it would almost offer like a resist. I am not too phased about it today for a couple of reasons. One of them being I'm going to be adding some embossing powder and some stamping to this door. I have a small plan in mind. So I know that it will all kind of work out okay because I do have some glue there where I had dirty finger mark. And you could use gel medium, you could use whatever adhesive you like, except I don't, I wouldn't recommend using double-sided tape. Um, and now I'm going to pop these guys on here. So I'm just going to use my glue mess. And always stick the middle one down first. Sorry, can you hear me concentrating? Because oh, that's really hard when you can't get over the top of the project to see what you're doing, but that's okay. All right, let me just Bear with me while I take this off camera. I just need to get over it just a fraction to straighten it up. And I kind of like that. That looks good. All right. Put that back there. Okay, so what I've done is just glued all of that down together now. I'm going to get these little other elements that I'm not using out of my way so that I can't um, accidentally paint those and now I'm going to get some color on. So the color combination, uh, I have pulled out here in front of me. I've got some Dina Wakely colors in, I've got turquoise, I've got mineral, I've got balmy night, I've got white, what's that one? Marine. Uh, so I'm going to just use a dry paintbrush to do this technique. I don't want anything too wet and I don't want too much of a wide paintbrush. I want something like that because I need to be able to get into the gaps and go from there. So, sorry, drink break. All right, so I'm just going to start with making a, a puddle of color on, my, on the side here that I can dip into. So I've got mineral, turquoise, marine. And this one is balmy night, which is very similar to marine, but a little bit more gray. And I think I need a little depth with night. All right, paper towel handy before I get going with the colour. And the other thing is, is because I'm going for a dry brush technique, I want to make sure that I have paper towel handy to take off any excess paint off of my brush. And I'm one of these people, my paper towel has to be on the right side of me you know okay so i'm going to start with the lightest color always start with your lightest color and as you can see if i i kind of brush it off here and in a really light motion i'm just going to do vertical strokes up and down and i'm going for a weathered door i will be adding some stamping and some embossing as well but i'm going to just get it on there 
like that. And I don't, I'm not using a whole lot of paint. And that is what's, that's what the key is to this project as well for me. Um, now, if I'm adding in that next color, I'm kind of pulling it off to the side, just getting a little on my brush. And it's overlapping over the top of that um, night, sorry, that mineral gray. And let, I mean, you could do this any color you like. I absolutely love these sorts of blue gray tones at the moment. That's what I'm, I'm drawn to. Um, but I'm, I'm, the definite thing here is I am not using a large amount of paint. I'm really thinking about less is best and going with a, um, I can build, build the color up rather than try and take it off. Okay, if that makes sense. So it's more of a shabby chic sort of style rather than a, a grungy door. Lots of little pieces, lots of little pieces, lots of little amounts of paint on my brush. And then it's just a a fast motion of straight vertical strokes and painting the, getting the paint on until nothing really comes off my brush. So you can kind of see that I kind of go up and down until nothing else really comes off my brush, okay? Now when I'm adding in this next lot of colors, I'm gonna start with this one, which is lighter than that one and lighter than that one. And you can see that this one is going to be a lot darker. So I'm gonna go with, again, less is best. And I can build the color up and it's a lot easier to do that than try and take it off. And I'm getting into the sides because I've already glued it. I don't wanna to have to try and get into the gaps again later. Dun, dun, dun. I need some background music. Someone sing for me. Kind of think that happened yesterday when I had my spammer join us and trying to, um, what was it? The guy saying something about twerking. Not at all awkward, mate, in a room full of women and the random guy. getting my brush up in there and you can see that the glue didn't take long to dry I can just get in there now if you have any questions guys feel free to um, to ask I will be able to see questions come up and ask away as I go and I'm just starting to mix up some of these colors as you can see And I'm going to go back over the top with some of these other colors as well. I'm turning it upside down because I seem to be favoring one side more than the other. Making sure I get in the gaps. Now I'm going to go back in and start getting some of this, mixing up these colours a little bit and trying to fill in any bits that I have missed. Concentra concentrating on doing that. So I'll be going over the top with a little bit of white and some of this night in a minute as well. Okay. So online today, for those of you who have just joined in, on nataliemay.com.au, you will find 15% off of chipboard. So this project that I'm working on at the moment is what I would call chipboard. Um, and we have <laughs> um, and we have got 
15% off of scrap effects products. So that would include um, rice paper and stencils and stamps from scrap effects, anything that is bought out by scrap effects. Um, scrap effects, for those of you who don't know, are a fantastic family business uh, here in Australia and they bring out a fabulous product. They've got a great range of products. What I love about their products, and I have no affiliation with this company at all, but what I love about the products is that they are designed by creative people like you and me. Um, they are, there's some fantastic creatives who work for, work alongside Scrap FX and um, I absolutely love their products. So I think that they are, they've hit the, hit the nail on the head with the market and I, I will continue to support their business. So today I have got a special on those. So can you see what I've done on that there? That door there just bringing all of those colors together is and making it work all right so um yeah so nataliemay.com.au and that you will get 15 percent off scrap effects products and chipboard and there's a good range of chipboard if you watch the other video that i filmed this morning um you will notice that i went through and did a bit of a bit of a show and tell of some of the chipboard and scrap effects that we have in stock um the no judgment postage special is also on where you pay postage one time and then then you will be able to add to your order after that for the measly price of one cent all right so the girls are saying at this point this is where they would stuff it up so there's a couple of um i'm just reading the comments at the same time as i'm doing this the reason why this is working and the reason why some people would think that they would stuff it up it's about choice of color number one um choice of color plays a very very big part in your project uh it's where you crack out the color wheel and go right okay what colors do i use i have here today i have chosen colors that are alongside each other on the color wheel okay so i haven't gone for colors that are opposite on the color wheel if you don't have a color wheel handy find one on the internet print it off and stick it on your wall in your craft bag wherever but have it handy and get to know it because it plays a huge part in your crafting so for example, if I had decided to use orange and blue, because orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel, they are going to make brown when you mix them together. If I was to choose red and green and do this technique with red and green, then those colors, when you mix them together, like I am doing now, will make brown. But because I have chosen green, uh, like aqua and blue and colors that are alongside each other on the color wheel, then I know that it is going to work. I know that it is a safe bet. The other reason that this is working is that I have got almost zero paint on my brush. See what's happening there? Almost nothing. And I'm using a really, really small amount of paint and adding layers that way. And this is also a technique that will work. It's the dry brushing technique. And it does take a little practice because we always tend to go in super heavy to start with and, and go over the top. But this is going to work quite nicely for me. The reason it is also working as well is I have a little bit of confidence in my abilities. Um, you all know that I bang on about this. Anyone who has been crafting with me for, for a while knows that I am all about confidence. If you don't have confidence in what you are doing, right, and if you're not willing to try something and go, I wonder what would happen if, then you're never going to like the project. All of my favourite projects are, come from what I wonder what would happen if moments, Okay. I've never done this one before. I've never done it in this color combination before. 
Uh, I've never watched a tutorial on how to do it or anything like that, but I know that I have a little bit of confidence in my own hand. I know that I have the ability to put colours together and I know that I can trust myself. Um, I also know that if I don't like it, I can paint over the top of it and build up colour that way, okay? And if I don't like it, I don't have to show anyone. I've gained more from going, oh, will I stuff that up? Okay, um, I've gained more by doing that than by not even trying, okay? So there's your motivational speech for the day. Stop and think before you start about the color choices that you are putting on. Stop and think and make a plan. How am I going to do this? Do I know what I want it to look like at the end? Have I got a bit of an idea in my head? Yes or no? Um, and, and just, you know, stop and think about it for just a second. All right, so you'll notice now that I'm bringing in the night. So this is a super dark color. So let me show you what happens if you go in and put too much color on your brush, right? And you go straight in and go, yep, heap of color. I can't even bring myself to do it actually. Um, if you get it on there, just and do that. Oh shit, hang, I mean, oh rats. Take it off your brush quickly and then spread it out and you can spread it out with your finger. Okay. Sorry about the swearing. It is Sunday and I am human. Um, but I don't want the, the, the dark colors to be in the middle at all. I want them to be around the edges. So I'm concentrating on getting my dark colors in and around underneath. And I'm going to bring it up to the camera in a minute so you can see exactly what I have done. Um, so for those of you who are freaking about, about messing it up, did, is what I say, did what I just say kind of make sense to you? Does that, is that like a, not a Sunday morning lecture, but you know, you, you, you kind of have to have a bit of confidence in your, in yourself. And you can see how um, rough it does actually look, but it's a weathered door. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of white. Okay. And this is the bit where I start to freak out. So, Yes, Marina. Marina's just commented saying that dark paint adds depth. Damn right it does. Okay, so the white is where I can freak out. So I'm going to put a very small amount of white paint. You could use gesso, but I'm going to go with white paint. And I'm not even going to clean my brush. I've still got no water. And you can see that there's not much paint on there. So I'm going to dip my paint in here, my brush into that paint, pull it off to the side, and then holding my brush actually quite high, I'm going to go in and put, pop on a little paint. And this is where, a little white paint, this is where that um, light touch comes into play. And I know that if I stuff it up, it's okay because I can put paint over the top of it again okay but you just want just just a touch but white is going to give dimension just like that um that night color is that we just did okay and it probably didn't even need it but you know what i've committed to it now and you can rub it with your finger rub it back with your finger and i'm the amount that I'm putting on my brush, where is it? There, like not much at all. But it's just a feather touch. It's just a super light feather touch. And 
and that bit there, that's annoying me, okay? So how do I fix that? I go back in over the top with another color, so I'm gonna choose that one with a little bit of that one, and I'm just going to tone it back and go. Okay, again, what happens when you have too much paint on there? So now I've got to spread it out. Okay, problem solved. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Okay, so there is my background paint color on. I'm now going to confidently not add any more. I haven't, and you can even see that I haven't even painted over the whole thing. Um, I'm more than happy to, I mean, I could go in here and get into all of these little gaps, but I don't really want to. Except for I just did that. Um, I'm happy to have some white showing. So I can confidently put my brush into the water now and I can confidently grab my uh, Use It Up journal. Where I you put all my excess paint. And I can put it into here because wait not, waste not, want not. Old journal, um, and this is just this is what I do with excess paint on my palette. Okay, and then I've got an instant art journal page um, when I am ready to do that. And I'm not phased that I've covered up something underneath because yeah, you know. See what I did earlier? Okay, you can see the whole use it up thing. Instant backgrounds. Okay. Sorry guys, let me just Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I just want to add a little pattern to it now because it's nice, but it's a bit, you know, how you doing? It's a bit boring. So, like my other door here, and I don't know if it's showing up. Bring it up to camera. There's a little bit of a sheen, a bit of shimmer to it and a little bit of stamping. Um, that is what I want to add on next. So I have, um, I'm going to start with some black archival ink and I've only got three stamps out here. Um, I've just got a, my, my off the grid stamp. I've got some dots and I've got a Dina Wakeley scribbly one here. Uh, what I want to do is just pop a little bit of stamping on. This would oh, this would also look good in a navy blue if you were to stamp in like a, a nice navy colour. And I'm not phased about it being a whole image. I just want it to be on there. And I can smudge it because it's an oil base. If I get my finger straight on, you can kind of see what I'm up to there. And I'm not even going to continue to re-ink. I'm just going to do a little of that. I do want to make sure that it's some sort of straight because that'll just bug me if it's all off kilt. And then it has, it has it's got this gorgeous little pattern that's starting in the background. Uh, I'm going to use the script stamp with some embossing powder in a moment. Uh, and I might do that now. So I have here uh, a couple of different Lindy's embossing powders. This one is called Silence is Golden. It's one of the new chunky ones. This is Don't Scream Aqua Marine. And I might use that to start with. Um, in fact, what I might do is pop a little on the side just brush it 
couple of high points here and there. And then I've got my little tray here, giving it a good shake. So these are the Chunky Lindy's embossing powders. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm not phased about it sticking on anywhere in particular. Oh, but that works. And I might do some more on the other side. So I, um, I'm a lover of the Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Ink. That is my favourite one to use. Oh, okay, so I may have overdone it a little there. So before I heat set that, I'm just going to use a paintbrush and take some off. Yeah, that works for me. And now I need to melt all of those little crystals. So this is where you have to have a heat gun for embossing and not a hairdryer, of course. And I need to cook that until all of those little crystals are melted. Um, and I'm just going to try and do it up close through the camera. Wait for my heat gun to heat up and then... There we go. So these are the Lindy's Chunky embossing powders. So that's why it's not perfect and smooth. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I wanted it chunky. I wanted that antique sort of look. Because what's gonna happen in a minute is I'm gonna pop some of the Lindy's Gang Moon Shadow Spray over the top as well. And that's going to antique it a little bit more and add that lovely shimmer that uh, the moon shadow sprays have got with them. So I just need to make sure all of that powder has melted and all of that powder has been activated. Sorry. Um, and now I want to add, I'm going to stamp with this one here and then add, I might use a slightly different colour. So I need to pop this back into the container Look away now if you don't like mess because let's be honest, it's not going to end well. Oh, oh, nailed it. And I'm going to use what did I say that was called? Silence is Golden or Angel Wings Peacock. Let's use that one. So this time I'm going to stamp my image. Stamp the scripty words from the Dina Wakeley stamp, and then it's just going to add a little bit of print to that top, and it will add a little shine to it.
and the powder's stuck to that section and I want to do some down here as well. So just a plain embossing ink with no colour. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a fan of the Tim Holtz one. I do like that one. And then sprinkle the powder over and of course it's only going to stick to that script stamped image. And then I just need to quickly heat set that. So the Angel Wings Peacock will dry clear with a peacock green aqua shimmer to it. And that is where the Lindy's products are super unique. I love that they do that. Now, I don't know if that shine is showing up on camera for that embossing powder. Oh, look at that. It actually is. Oh, there you go. Okay. Now, this along here where it's quite white, a couple of things that I can do. I'm going to... i um, just going to pop a little bit of balmy paint on my finger. And I'm talking like dirty finger rub. And I'm just going to take a little bit of whiteness out of it. It's still going to have the shimmer that the Lindy's powder, the embossing powder gives. Um, and that gorgeous colour. But it's just going to take that starkness out of it. Um, so I can put that on. Yeah, I love the layers. The layers is what makes it fun. The layers make it really interesting. Um... So someone's just commented saying, thank you very much. I love those, love, love the look of those layers. Yeah, the layering is that little bit of interest of going, oh, I wonder what she's done there. That is what I like about the layers as well. Okay, you want to look a little bit past what you can see and go, wow, she's actually put a little bit more effort into this, but it hasn't, you know, it's not too, too tricky. So you can see where that... Um, embossing powder is all right let's have a look at the lindy's moon shadow mist so for those of you who don't know um as a master educator for lindy's gang it is my job to show you how this stuff all works so the moon shadow mist is one of the uh colors that has a sepia or a colored ink and uh, but the shimmer is this beautiful blue so this one is called buccaneer bay blue and you can see the shimmer kind of floating around in there uh, when I spray it and I'll just do a little spray here you'll see what I mean about the oh, can you see the shimmer on the paper towel there's a little hint of blue there yeah there we go all right so what I want to do now is I'm going to give it a little bit of this colour. But instead of spraying it, am I going to spray it? Stuff it, I'll spray it. It's going to add that gorgeous shimmer. The colour works in with... The, the blue shimmer sits on top. The, uh, the brown spray is going to antique it up just that little bit more. Make sure I give it a shake to get that gorgeous shimmer. And now I'm going to hit that with the heat gun to dry it off. Um, the next bit is... There's a couple of more little steps I'm going to do here with this and it's going to be adding a couple of embellishments. Um, I've got some Tim Holtz knobs. So I've got these little um, fasteners. 
I'm going to pop one of those on perhaps or and I've got some keys as well so I'll just quickly dry this off it might take a moment because that liquid of course is sitting on top of the paint so just chat amongst yourselves for a second go and make yourself a coffee go and give your husband a snog or whatever you want to do with you can you see that oh i can see that shimmer is gorgeous but my color is still sitting in the background that original color that i added all of those layers all right patience gone dun, dun, dun. just take off that extra wetness and now i'll bring it up to the camera to show you Man, this looks so good in real life. Every now and again, I surprise myself, guys. Um, yeah, the Lindy's did pop the embossing. Look at that down here. Can you see that coming up on camera? Wow. Now, this bit here is still loose and not stuck down because I know that I want to add... Um, I'm going to turn this into a mini book. I will paint the back as well in a plain colour, perhaps. Um, okay, so my door. Let's talk knobs. A ring fastener. Let's have a look at this. On my original book, um, at the time, I didn't have access to any knobs. And I used this little metal job here and stuck a, um, a gem in the middle. And that was actually originally bright pink. And I used a Copic marker or some alcohol ink to colour that. And then I popped my little um, Tim Holtz dead person on here and some of the transparent wings. Um, so you could quite easily do, do that. So this time I think I'm going to keep it super simple because I'm going to make a mini album out of this. And I don't know what the mini album is going to be about yet. All right. So here is my little handle. So that is just a little clasp and I need to pop it all the way through. Oh, and I've just realized I can choose, I've got silver, bronze or gold. I think I was on the right track with silver. So I need my pokey tool. Oh, rats. Okay, and it needs to go all the way through and I think... I don't know, about there looks good. Oh, can you tell I need to get my nails done this week? I'm taking two days off, girls. I, after we get all of your orders shipped out on Monday and Tuesday, I will teach a class on Wednesday and I'm going to take Thursday and Friday off. They are going to be maintenance day, haircut, nails, waxing, all the things. Working for the last uh, 11 days straight with no day off, um, my body is saying no, Natalie. All right, so now I have a little knob, a little handle, and that's just popped all the way through with a pokey tool. Um, that might have been nicer if I'd set it up a little bit higher. Um, I think what I might do is get a little piece of string and tie a key. So these are the Tim Holtz adornment keys. And I love this pack because it's got these little baby keys in it. Little baby keys. Let's get one of those out. Oh, how about we get two keys? Let's go for two and some string now did anybody see where that string was on my desk before no found it stop looking okay so what i'm going to do here uh is just chat amongst yourselves while you watch me struggle to get the key threaded Oh, it worked in the hole. In the hole. In the hole. 
So what's everyone up to today? Anyone got anything exciting happening? Or are you just gonna hang out with me a little? That's perhaps a little long. Um, I will be back here at one o'clock, one, sorry, 1.30 Adelaide time in two hours from now. Um, and I'm gonna do another live Facebook talking about all of my favorite tools, all the things that I use to create with. Cleaning between lives. Oh, the life we live, hey? I know, it's exciting stuff. Um, what am I doing here? Okay. Oh, that's a bit better. Uh, okay. Crafting day for you, Alison. Lovely. So a few of you are crafting today, which is wonderful. All right. There we go. I made that hard, didn't I? Sorry about that. So I'm really loving this. I'm loving the way that it is. It's got a bit of shine. It's got a bit of shimmer there's a couple of different techniques in there we have got the um i started so for those of you who are just tuning in now i'll quickly just talk you through what we are looking at so this is one of the ab studios chipboard doors they are a they come as a, uh, a a whole heap of different pieces and what i did is i found a picture on the internet to give me a bit of an idea on how it could lay out. I changed it up ever so slightly. I used an inspiration from there. Um, I then you I glued it all together and um, with the exception of this bit here, that's not totally glued down because I think I'm gonna put some paper in there to help bind it when I make it into a mini book. But the um, I used acrylic paint in the background. So the acrylic paint that I used in the background was a combination of mineral from Dina Wakeley and turquoise. Mineral, turquoise. I've got some marine, balmy night. Oh, come here. Night and white. They are the colours that I used to paint the background with using a dry brush technique, meaning that I'd never added water to my brush. I then used, once it was all stuck down, um, I got some embossing powder. So the embossing powder that I used is uh, from Lindy's Gang. So the chunky embossing powders, which have got all of these lovely little multiple colors in them. And I added some to the background with an ink pad. And then I stamped over the top here with Angel Wings Peacock, which is another Lindy's color. And that one has brought out the uh, the blue shimmer in the embossing powder. Uh, there's also some stamping in the background there, which is this grid here that you can see. That stamp is my off, off the grid stamp that is from the Natalie May scrapbooking collection. Uh, what else did I do? What did I miss? Oh, I popped a Tim Holtz fastener on there as a knob with a couple of little keys. So this will actually become a mini album. Um, you will find all of these products online at nataliemay.com.au. The keys and the fastener, for example, you will find in the Tim Holtz section. Just have a bit of a scroll through and you will find those. Uh, the chipboard you will find under the chipboard heading, the paint that I used. Etc. But what I will actually do in a moment is I will take a photo of, photograph of this and quickly do a post and I will link the products that I have used just so that you can easily find them. Okay, so thank you so very much for tuning in. If you jump online today to nataliemay.com.au, you will find 15% off of chipboard, which is what I have used here. You'll also find 15% off Scrap Effects products as well. So, um, fantastic. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. And I will see you back here at 1.30 for Natalie's favorite tools and mediums and how to use them. Thanks, guys.